Psalm 20, verse 2 is the theme of our conference, the theme of this year, theme of this convention. And look what it says. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble, verse 1. May the name of the God of Jacob set you up on high and defend you. How many say, Lord, be my defense? Send your help from the sanctuary and support, refresh, and strengthen you from Zion. How many of you know that'd be well enough right as it is? That God says from the sanctuary. How many of you know from right here? From right here is going to be support, help, refreshing, and strength. How many of you say, Lord, I could use some of that? Remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifices, Salah, praise and think on that. Verse 4, may he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all of your plans. Have you say, Lord, I thank you for that promise. I thank you for that promise. Psalm 3, verse 4, I was crying to the Lord with my voice and he answered me from his holy Zion mountain. How do you know God hears the cry of your heart and he answers you? How many of you want God to answer you today? I do. I want God to answer me in every way. Psalm 128 verse 5, the Lord bless you from Zion and may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. How do you say, Lord, I want to see blessing in my life. Now, you know, this church is blessed. We just got word this week that uh, Steve Smith of the Ravens, used to play for the Ravens, is going to give us 50 turkeys. And God is blessing this church constantly. And there's some doors that are opening up. I can't tell you all about it, but there's some doors opening up. And we're looking at starting a new school, and we're trying to put all those pieces together. And God is opening doors. Before we get there, he's already opening the doors. How do you know when God wants to favor a people, he will do remarkable things? Now, come with me today, thinking about the past 34 years, or, you know, I, I looked at it this way, 30, and then the number four, two different numbers. 30 is the number of 30-fold or fruit-bearing stage. How many say, Lord, we're at the fruit-bearing stage? Jesus was 30 when he began, and began his public ministry. And the number four is the number of man in the world. It is the four seasons, the four compass points, north, east, south, west. It is the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. How many of you know what it's saying together? Is God's going to make us fruitful over man. How many of you say, Lord, I want to be fruitful over everything that man is supposed to touch? That means I'm fruitful in my job. That means I'm fruitful in the culture. God wants to make us fruitful in 2017 in to 18 and make us fruitful to the man. I want us to take a minute and look at the spiritual things that God has done. How I mean, you know we can judge by the natural and think something is successful? Hello? We look at a church and see the size of the building and say that is a blessed church. When inside it's an empty sepulcher. Now in my perspective... I've looked at some of the things, of course, the church has done, and, and we've done some pretty remarkable things. We've built up here on 30-some acres of land, and uh, we've built buildings, and we've built all kinds of stuff, and we've done all that. That's great. And we've done a lot of things in the city. We've done things to, to give houses away. This is our 15th house we gave away this year. We've done things uh, all over the place to have impact. We've put the largest crowds ever held in Washington, D.C. We put them there. We as a group, many of the people in this church, we put 400,000 young people on the mall called The Call. We helped organize that. We helped put all that piece together. Washington for Jesus, we were parts of the logistic team of putting that together, even into the one that we did on the steps of the Capitol. We've done those things, and they are remarkable things. We have a sports league that is just phenomenal, just finished up soccer. 
and God has blessed it. It's been going on for 40 years. We have so many things that we've done. The play that we do, wow, what an awesome play. All of these are things we've done. We feed people. We fed people during Katrina and during Hurricane Rita, then Hurricane Ike, and then Hurricane Sandy. We put uh, $1.2 billion worth of goods in New Orleans during Hurricane uh, Katrina. We've moved mountains. We put 15 tractor trailer loads up in New York at Hurricane Sandy. We've done some remarkable things. Are you listening? But that's not what I'm going to talk to you about. Because that's not the measure of something. For the measure of something is what God is doing in the spirit world more than in the natural world. Are you hearing me? And so the Bible says in Luke chapter 4, which is really just Jesus repeating what Isaiah said in chapter 4. And, and he says in verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me the anointed one, the Messiah, that preached the good news of the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to announce release to captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to send forth as delivered those who are oppressed, who are downtrodden, bruised, crushed, and broken down by calamity to proclaim the accepted and acceptable year of the Lord, uh, the day when salvation and free favors of God profusely abound. Have you seen that? That's Jesus talking there and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Let's look at that first. That's why there is an anointing. That's why the altars are open. That's why the spiritual content of this house is larger than the body of this house. And it's larger than the building of this house. The spiritual impact that this house has as a watchman over our city is larger than the numbers. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. You could declare that. I declare that. I declare the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Can you say yes to that in your own life? Say the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Then it says because. Now that's where you stop. Because. He only gave the spirit of God to you because. There has to be a because. If there's not a cause, David said, what's the sense? There has to be a because. That means there has to be a purpose for what it is that God's doing. So the Spirit of God is on me because he anointed me. Have you say, Lord, thank you for the anointing. You could say, Lord, he anointed you. Have you know the Spirit of God comes and he anoints you? You can have the Spirit of God and not be anointed. Hello? You can have the Spirit of God and never be anointed. And too many of God's people today get the Holy Spirit and shove him in a box and hold him and peek at him once in a while to make sure he's still there. But God wants to not just give you his Spirit. He wants to anoint you with a power and a refreshing and gifts of operation. Hello. Now, He's going to anoint you. He wants to anoint you. To do what? To preach the good news. It's called the gospel. God wants you to preach the good news. Everybody, everybody in this room, you should be measuring your, your walk with God by the ability of you to preach the gospel. It's not preaching like you see here. I'm talking about preaching it by living it, by talking it, and by demonstrating it every day of your life. The Spirit of the Lord hath anointed me, and he's anointed me to do what? To preach the good news. How many of you say it's good news? And then it says it's good news because I'm preaching to the poor. How do you know when you see the word poor there, it means natural poor and spiritual poor? How do you know Jesus became poor so that he might become rich for our sakes? Hello? Because Jesus, he, he didn't become bankrupt. He became poor. That poor there means humble. That means humility. Poor in spirit means he became humble. How do you know there are people that are both poor in the natural, means they have no resource, and then there are those that are spiritually humble, and God wants to cause them uh, to hear the message of the gospel. And then it says, he sent me. How many say, Lord, thank you. He sent me. 
There's a lot of people that go and God never sent them. Hello. And he sent you to announce release to captives. How many of you know when you go and you go out today, you're out there to announce the good news and announce the freedom, the releasing to captives. And then it says the recovery of sight to the blind. How many of you know there are blind people in the natural and there's blind people in the spiritual? How many of you know some people have eyes but they can't see? I know people sitting in this church. You have eyes but you never see. You've never seen Jesus and how good he is to you. Because all you see is the natural, you never see the spiritual. Wow. He sent forth, he sent us forth as delivered, uh, deliverers to those oppressed. How many of you know there's people with depression? There's people that have a band around their head and their band is squeezing their brain and they're overwhelmed with the negativity of thoughts and God wants us to go up and take the band off and loosen their mind so that God can put his word in their mind. I mean, you know, God will heal your mind. I know what it means to be messed up in the mind because I took so much drugs, my brain was fried. But God washed my brain out and gave me a new resurrected mind. Come on. And then it says to proclaim God's day of salvation and favor. That's the acceptable day of the Lord. Have you say, Lord, thank you that you've anointed me. Say it with me one more time. Thank you for anointing me. Now, here's something that it describes. Come with me real quick. It describes what we've been doing for the last 34 years right here. By the grace of God, all these times have been God encounters some were individual, some were group or corporate. Encounters with God. Some lasted for long periods until we moved on to the next move of God. And some were short-lived but were just as powerful and life-changing. How many you know God has caused life encounters to happen in this church? And, and in this ministry, over in the other building. When we were in the other building, we just grew, grew, grew. We outgrew everything. We were in our gym with two services on Sunday morning. We didn't have any room. It was packed to the brim. We had to go to two services. God was blessing. And people were getting something. People were receiving something from God. How do you hear that? Our contact with internationals and those that are part of what we do and all that are connected, they are, their impact has come because there's an anointing. How do you hear and, and I, I want to tell you this, saints, we need to see what it is we have and what it is we are instead of seeing the surroundings and mistakenly think that that qualifies us. Amen. The size and comfort of this building does not qualify us. What qualifies us is the depth of the spiritual environment that's in this room. When people come to the eternity play and they walk in and go, what am I feeling? What is this that I sense? How many of you, the first time you came in here, you felt something? Didn't hear, you just felt something. Let me see your hands. Hold them up a minute. Hold them up a minute. Now look around, saints. Look around. You got brothers and sisters in here that the first time they walked in, they felt something. That's that abiding anointing that's in this house. And that's what makes what we are valuable and makes what we are purposeful. That's how come we could be here for 34 years. Because there's an anointing. All these God encounters... They brought us to different levels. All of them evolved, involved a principle called the threefold cord, which is in Ecclesiastes 4.12. It is called, uh, for me, it is called the principle of faith and God's manifest presence and those that import or export the, the anointed, an anointing. How many of you know there's three aspects to a rope? Threefold cord is not easily broken. In it, we're going to take it and say there's faith cord. That's what this church has. This church has a faith cord. This church has a presence cord. That what we do when we come down to the altar, there are people coming down and they have never felt what they feel down here. There are people that walk up on this platform. Where's Wayman? He came up, what, a few weeks ago. Walked right here. 
He told me later, he said, I didn't know if I was going to be able to stand up. So you have no idea when I'm standing here right now, Antonio does, you have no idea the anointing that is resident right here. When great famous preachers from around the world have walked up here, some of them, Benny Hinn's people, couldn't even stand. They fell over. Great preachers rolled on the floor and just cried and said, I'm unworthy to be in this place. It's called the anointing. I can't manipulate it. I can't make it up. I can't contrive it. It is God's selective choice uh, that he anoints who he will and when he will. And he has decided to put his name over this house uh, and let his abiding Shekinah abide here. And what we do with kids and what we do with outreaches and what we do in everything has one element in it. It has the cord that cannot be broken of faith, uh, presence, and then they're the imparters. How do you hear me? God wants to cause us to understand that the anointing is what has broke yokes. Uh, it's the anointing that uh, pulls something out of you that needs to come out of you. It's the anointing that broke a yoke off of you. It's the anointing uh, that sets your feet a dancing. It's the anointing that put joy back inside of you. It is not what we can do with our graphics or what we can do with a building. It is because Shekinah, it is because the glory of the Lord, because the Spirit of God hath anointed us. Now remember this, in Romans 12, 3 through 8, God says he gives you a measure of faith. And because he gave you a measure of faith, you have to exercise the faith he gives you so it'll grow. Come on, saints. He gives you, it's like a muscle. If you don't exercise the muscle, you ain't going to have it. It's going it's to go away. And God gave everyone a measure of faith. What have you done with your measure? I can tell you, he gave me a measure. What I did, I invested it. I invested it. Listen to me, I've invested for years. I've taken no money, sleeping on cardboard boxes and invested money. I, I built houses uh, and tripled and tripled the sale on those houses. Why? Because I learned how to invest. You give me a banana and come back a week later, I'm going to have a fruit stand. Hello? God opened the door. I meet Haja. I pour into Haja into Ukraine. Haja goes home. He don't know what to do. He's going to start a cell group. He has a little house meeting. Goes crazy. Gets a building. It goes crazy. He keeps growing. Now he's got 17, 14 churches. God is just blessing him, blessing him, blessing him. Why? Because I transferred the anointing that was on me to him, and now he's carrying it. And listen to me, like water in the spigot, when the water goes to the back of the tub, it gets heavier at the back of the tub than it did in the front of the tub. So the anointing that God gave me is greater on him because it's going down to him. The garment was down that, uh, that Jesus wore and that lady touched. The anointing went down. Uh, and the, remember what it said, the priest had the oil flowed down his beard and went down the greater anointing is that it's passed down the second level of this faith is expanded faith and the bearing of fruit how of you know if you get faith you're going to have to have fruit in that faith and the fruit of faithfulness is the first thing God will give you can you hear that the first thing God will cause to happen in your life is the measure of faith will turn into a gift a fruit of faith and the fruit of faith will be faithfulness I wish I could get that across. Oh, God, help us. Third level is a gift of faith. How many of you know you have a measure of faith, you have the fruit of faith, and you have the gift of faith? And 1 Corinthians 12, 9 describes a special surge of confidence to God and his word that rises up in someone to face a specific situation. That's what it means to have a gift of faith. How many of you want to have the fruit of faith and be faithful? Can I see your hand? How many of you want to have the gift of faith where you can impart it to others and impart it to circumstance? Anybody understand that? How many of you want to have the gift of faith? I, I've gone into churches and raised up $200,000, $300,000 offerings for them to pay their buildings off because I have a gift of faith. Come on. How many of you say, Lord, I need to increase my faith. So Rock City Church... All these 34 years, this piece of the rope is all we've ever known. We know faith. We got a measure. 
We got fruit of it, and we've got the gift of it. How many say, Lord, me too? Here's the last two, real quick. And, and this is important now. You remember Hebrews says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So you can't even get close to it. And remember, God don't spell faith like we do. Spell it for me. F-A-I-T-H. God spells it R-I-S-K. Oh, me or amen. God spells faith different than you and I do. We spell it S-A-F-E. He spells it R-I. I feel like the Oriole guy, you know. I don't know how to do that, but here's the next one. Second chord is the God encounters. That's the second part of your chord. Faith is the first part. Second part is God encounters. Luke 5, 17 says, the power of the Lord was present for him, Jesus, to perform healings. I mean, you know, sometimes his presence is over a place like Jerusalem, like the little stable in uh, California called Azusa Street. And have you know there's a place called Rock City Church that God also chose to put his name because a man used to meet on this property in 1743 and used to hold prayer meetings right here. In 1743, Robert Strawbridge lived on this property, the first Methodist ever to America, and he held prayer meetings right here. And we came along all these hundreds of years later and found a mantle. And it just happens to be that one of his grandchildren had a love for Liberia and reaching out to Africa. Huh. How did we end up with this multicultural church? And it also has to be one of his granddaughters happened to love ministering to battered women. How do we have a home for girls? Because we picked up a mantle. You never take your mantle with you. When you die, you leave it. Part of the threefold cord is the last one. It is called imparters. Those who took the measure of faith and with faithfulness operated in the gifts of faith to see his presence manifested in the place and through the place to people around the world. How do you know that's what we've done? We took the presence of God and transferred it. That's what happens when we take, look, one of our sons has just started a church for six months and he's already consistently at 120, 25 people. Hello? And he was a part of some networks and part of some church structure that had been in a place for 20 years and couldn't get to that. Have you here? Aja didn't all of a sudden just become Mr. Popularity. He's an engineer. As you know, Philippians says, you can partake of another man's grace. How do you know this thing's transferable? How do you know that there's a transference of anointing? You can take on something that you didn't have. You can get something that's not yours. It can be transferred to you so you can live above and not below. So you can live to your potential. So you can be all that God wants you to be. And there's an anointing in this house for you to step into the supernatural realm and begin to operate in faith and begin to operate in blessing. Here's the last one. Paul said, I desire, I long to see you in order that I may impart some spiritual gift to you that you may be established. These are imparters, and they're like battery cables. They jumpstart you. How many hear that? How many know we need imparters that will jumpstart our faith? And next year begins tomorrow, and we're going to see some new jumpstarters added to the church. We're going to see some new 
jump starters who are going to say, I got something. I'm going to impart something. I'm going to plug into somebody and give them something. How many of you hear that? How many of you stand to your feet today? Put your hands as high as you can and say, Lord, charge my battery. Ask the Holy Spirit right now, the Holy Spirit, to charge your battery, to cause the anointing of God that's in this house. Stop identifying the preacher by personality and begin to say, Lord, I thank you that you put me in a house uh, and it is the house where the Spirit of the Lord is because the Lord hath anointed me uh, and the Lord has caused the glory of his presence to come uh, over us, to wash over us, to empower us, uh, to uh, fill us. I want you to ask the Lord today, say, fill me, God, fill me up, uh, fill me up uh, out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your belly. Come on, saints of God. Come on, saints of God. This is a year of Hezekiah. He's come to clean the church up. He's come to empower the church. Restore worship. Restore prayer. Restore the anointing. Get rid of the trash. Get rid of the trash in your soul. Get rid of the trash in your soul. Let him do that. Come on. Over everything you are seated in our praise. This is prophetic. This is prophetic. Can you feel it in the air? Oh, change the atmosphere. We're going to sing that again. But I want to tell you something. If I declare to you that that's what this house is, and that's what's made this house become what it is and has done. You know that when we moved in this church, we'd already baptized over 10,000 people. I believe that God can change your life. I believe that God can heal you. I believe that God can restore you. I believe that God can do miracles in your life. I believe it because I have it, because he's done it. He can do it to you. Now we're going to sing this again. When we sing it this time for just a minute, would you let go and let God I mean, my God, some of you, I know your life. Now, we're going to give you a chance. If you close your eyes, nobody will see you being crazy. If you shut your eyes, nobody will see you acting a little bit just uncivilized. So you slip your hands up. You close your eyes. And you start moving. You see, you're kind of like a tree. You, you sway a little bit. I'm going to help you today. You just kind of move. Let the left leg and the right leg kind of bend. You kind of move. You know, you can add a little soul to it. You can kind of wiggle it a little bit. You can say, and then you say, okay, okay, I'm getting it now. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed because you don't want to imitate somebody. You want to be original. You want to be just like the original. So you just kind of, oh, you feel that? You just kind of feel that like the wind blowing in your tree. You know, you just kind of move around. Uh, Okay, here we go. Now, singers, you got to do it now. Turn it up with the sounds of praise. Make it louder than any other. Lift him up and shout his name over all. Turn it up with the sounds of praise. Make it louder than any other. Lift him up and shout his name.
Put your hands together.